Welcome to another video. Whether you are taking Calculus 1 or Calculus 2, you will learn how to do this if you don't already know it. Remember that we know how to differentiate sine to be cosine, but there is no straightforward way of differentiating inverse sine, which is arc sine, and that's what we have here. So we have to think of implicit differentiation. If you're taking Calc 2, you should know what the derivative of inverse sine is. You expect it to know it because you're going to be using it in um, solving integrals. Okay, so, but if you're taking Calc 1 and you still don't know how to differentiate inverse sine, this is how to do it. Not just inverse sine. Whatever technique you see tonight in this video is how you solve all inverse trig derivatives. I mean, how you compute inverse trig derivatives by implicit differentiation. But this now involves a chain. It's a chain of inverse sine and the square root function and then a polynomial. Okay, before we go on, like this video, make sure you share it. If you're not subscribed, just make sure you're subscribed. Let's get into it. The first thing we're going to do is make this function less complicated. So let's break it down and say that we're going to make this argument. We're going to say let u be equal to the square root of 2x minus x squared. And we can write this as u equals 2x minus x squared to the 1 half. Therefore, this entire problem, y, is just inverse sine of u. Which means we can find, remember that when you differentiate y in terms of x with respect to x, you are looking for dy dx. So we know that dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. So we have two tasks and as soon as we get both of these, we can find this by simply multiplying these two together. And we already know what y is in terms of u. We know what u is in terms of x. So um, let's start with differentiating du dx. So here we've got u equals 2x minus x squared to the 1 half. If we apply the chain rule here, we know that du dx will be equal to 1 half of 2x minus x squared to the negative 1 half multiplied by the derivative of the inside which is going to be 2 minus 2x. Okay, if we try to simplify this, see with this negative 1 half sign is the same thing as saying 1 half times 1 over the square root of 2x minus x squared multiplied by 2 times 1 minus x. If we factor out the 2, and you see this 2 cancels this 2, and this 1 minus x can sit on top of this and have it to be 1 minus x over the square root of 2x minus x squared. We are done with du dx. So now we need to find dy du, which is where our implicit differentiation comes in. So, let's see. So we know that y is arc sine of u, but we don't know how to differentiate arc sine, but we know how to differentiate sine, right? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to convert this into a sine function by taking the sine of both sides. So watch this. I'm going to say sine y is equal to sine of arc sine u. Sine y is equal to, the sine of the inverse of sine is just u. So sine y is equal to u. So now let's differentiate this. If I differentiate sine y, I'm going to get cosine y, right, times, because, I'm, because y is a function of u and I'm differentiating with respect to u, 
this is going to be sine y times dy du. If I differentiate this with respect to u, what do I get? I get 1. So clearly, dy du is 1 over cosine y, right? So I know that dy du is 1 over cosine y, or what we call secant y. Let's just write secant y. Okay, and we're done. No, we're not done. Now, what really is secant y? Let's go back. We said that sine y is u. So whenever you do implicit differentiation involving trig like this, you have to draw a triangle. Because this triangle say the sine of angle y is u, and u is u over 1, which is opposite over hypotenuse. So it means that what we have here is the square root of 1 minus u squared. Interesting. Right? This is it. So if you go back here, what is secant y? Secant is 1 over cosine, or we just say it is hypotenuse over adjacent. So you notice that secant y can be written as 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. So we can say that dy du is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared. So you notice that u squared is going to be the square of this. Right? Let's write it. So this is going to be equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus the square of u is going to get rid of this 1 half and you just have 2x minus x squared. So it's going to be minus 2x plus x squared. Okay? When you distribute the minus, this sign becomes a plus. So this becomes a plus. This is now a minus. But this is a perfect square. Do you notice that? Because this is the same thing as 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, which is the same thing as 1 over 1 minus x. That is dy du. So now we can compute dy dx. dy dx equals dy du times du dx, which is equal to, what's dy du? 1 over 1 minus x. And what is du dx? It's 1 minus x over the square root of 2x minus x squared. It is times 1 over the square root of 2x minus x squared. Sorry, 1 minus x, rather. So we have 1 minus x. So this cancels this, and it looks like the derivative of that function is just 1 over the square root of 2x minus x squared. Interesting. This is a good practice problem. All kinds of algebra and all kinds of manipulations. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.